Hi there, how's it going? Today we're going to be um, exploring two different approaches to how engineering can be used as a method of coastal defense. We're going to be looking at um, seawalls, which is a method of hard engineering, and beach nourishment, which is a method of soft engineering. Um, I've chosen to use this video game called City Skylines to simulate and depict how these methods are used in the real world so we can get a better understanding of it. Um, let's get straight into it. First off, I want to talk about seawalls. We actually have uh, one built conveniently right here, so we can just uh, talk about it right away. A seawall is a structure generally made out of hard materials like concrete or stone that is directly built onto the coast. The purpose of a seawall is to provide a strong structure to protect areas where humans live or have a vested interest in from tides, waves, coastal erosions, or tsunamis. Um, let's talk about the advantages of seawalls. So, first of all, they provide a strong structure that only has to be built once and does not require maintenance costs because um, you probably only need it unless it, it gets damaged somehow. Um, if done right, seawalls can be aesthetically pleasing and add value to the city. Um, as you can see here, it does increase the land value because people feel safe because of the seawalls and their real estate feels protected. The disadvantages of seawalls are that it can be unnatural. Uh, it is expensive, although it only requires a one-time building. Um, it, it can be expensive for that one time. Um, another problem is that, probably the main problem is that it, you lose the access to the beach, which can be a huge problem because people love beaches because of their leisure, um, activities. Uh, it can also harm the ecosystem because, for example, turtles need beaches to lay their eggs, but if a seawall is built, it obviously takes away that, uh, habitat for animals. So, where do we see seawalls in the real world? This is Japan. And in Japan, almost half of the coastlines are covered with seawalls. And they're m mo uh, mainly built to withstand tsunamis and stuff. Because Japan is really susceptible to that. But unfortunately, in 2011, although there were seawalls, Japan could not, um, could not protect uh, the cities due to the s uh, pure severity of the tsunamis and many of the seawalls did fail however um, Japanese authorities are planning to increase their budget to 6.8 billion dollars to build better and bigger uh, seawalls that can withstand better tsunamis so how can seawalls be improved and it's actually really simple it's due to a design called a concave seawall and let me show you the simulation right now. So here we have a simple seawall here. And as you can see, water, some water gets past and could potentially harm people who live in that tiny little house there. But here we have a concave seawall with its um, top a little hooked. And yeah, it does so much better against strong waves. Cool, so that's seawalls for you. Now let's talk about beach nourishment. So for that, we're gonna come to the coast here. Beach nourishment is the process of placing additional sediments onto the beach, onto existing beaches uh, to extend it and shape a new coastline. Sediments can be extracted from under the ocean or from other coastlines. So we have, I have pictures here to show you. This is how beach nourishment is done. It's dumped onto the coast and people spread it out but make it to make it even so what does that look in the real world or rather in the game world um so it looks like this let's take our um shaping terrain tool here and let's do ooh. so we have extended the beach and this is what beach nourishment looks like we take sediments from somewhere and put it on and extend it but it is flooding now, and that's bad. 
but let's talk about the advantages of beach nourishment um it is natural it looks natural completely natural and it preserves the look of the beach and it preserves the purpose of providing people with area for leisure and it expands on that it allows more le uh, leisurely activities to be taken and it also increases the land for potential usage because we can potentially increase i mean expand the city onto this beach uh here and have more houses for people and have more buildings and offices for people something like that and let's talk about the disadvantages um in contrast to seawalls although they cost uh, relatively expensive like similarly expensive um uh, beach nourishment does require you to continually um, add sediments on because as this gets eroded um, you need to over time you need to add more and more and more so yeah and also the sediments need to come from somewhere they don't just magically appear so you can either extract it from under the ocean which is super expensive or you can just take it from another beach potentially harming um, the coastline there um, and the worst disadvantage for beach nourishment is that it doesn't actually protect against natural disasters it protects against uh, well it doesn't it just it sort of it sort of like puts a band-aid on coastal erosion instead of actually preventing it from happening um, and yeah so if there was a tsunami I think seawalls would stand a better chance than you know extending the beach because it's just gonna go past and kill people so let's look at an example of how seawalls are used in the real world uh, this is a map of the tiny island of Singapore um, in bright red and lighter red you can see um, areas that have land that have been reclaimed which means that they've uh, technically like extended and built land that are used today but I want you to take notice of the coastal area at um, the bottom left area uh, corner and so they technically did beach nourishment there and they've ex expanded the beach area there for people to use and through a lot of hard work and probably even more money the Singaporean people have um, not only increased the length of their coastline but also uh, their country, the size of their country from 224 square miles to right now 277 square miles and by 2030 the government the government wants Singapore to uh, reach to measure up to around 300 square miles so um yeah thank you for watching i really enjoyed making this and i hope you enjoyed watching you guys enjoyed watching too so um thank you and bye